welcome back. You have been watching a CNBC Africa special broadcast on the, from the Edo Technology Day 2013. In the last hour or so, we have been looking at the topic education at the brink of digital revolution. Okay, Tony, let me, you wanted to make a point. Go ahead. I agree to the extent from an implementation or operational perspective. But you see, policy is very, very important because once you don't, once you don't, no, no, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, implementation no, 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 it is not, it is not, it is not just about implementation because this there's a, there's a difference, there's a difference. Let me give you, let me give you an example of what I'm saying. Okay. You can create a policy environment, you create a regulatory environment, and you also create the legal framework for it. And most times we miss this in Nigeria. That is why you find that corruption is very, very high in Nigeria. We cannot contain it. I, I, I will give you, I will give you, I will give you a typical example. I will give you a typical example. Why should I finish my exam and I should not be able to get my result online? So if I finish my exam and there is a regulation, there's a policy framework, there's a legal regime backing it up, that my result must be available online two weeks or three weeks or whatever it sets. And if I, and, 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 no, you are saying it's happening something. Let me tell you something. There is no way today I can hold anybody accountable for not doing certain things. There is no way. Let me give you a, a very typical example of particular something what we experience in government. There's no substantial difference between what the teachers are experiencing in terms of being ICT illiterate and what civil servants are experiencing in terms of being ICT illiterate. But we create some policy deterrents. For example, in our Ministry of Budget, we make sure that it is e-budget. If you are a ministry, if you cannot upload your budget online, then you don't have budget for that year, for that fiscal year. That's, that's toying, a, toying. That is a bit Hold on, Sorry, Mr. Toyin. I think Nigeria okay. has more laws than enough, right? But if you look at the National Assembly, they're Nigerians. When was the last time your senators discussed education on the floor of the National Assembly? It is either they're discussing... Education doesn't have to... Look, we need to stop winking in the dark. Education has got to be a priority. Let me give you a simple example. And it begins with you and I. It is not just with the government. Mr. Leo Staneke, you've done an incredible job with Zinox Technologies. Two weeks ago, Zinox Technologies signed Inyanya, the artist, for 53 million naira to put all his music on all Zinox computers that will be going out. When are we going to put our SS1, JS1 to SS3 content on all those computers as well? Well, thankfully, so thankfully that, he's here to respond to no, that. No, no. So, so that, no, okay, so, okay, hold on. Up. So that our children can know that when their parents buy laptops, they get value. When we receive SMSs every day, I walked up to the, minutes, to the managing director of Airtel last week. I said, sir, I don't need money from you. I've created PassNowNow.com. All I need from you is to give me Airtel to facilitate it so that every day young people can get English tips via SMS for free. <laughs> now, take a look. We need to stop winking in the dark. If we, if we must put our money where our mouths are, Mr. Leo Staneke, you built your business because you got an education. You are going to be, in 20 years, you are going to work with the walking stick. You've got to educate the generation that will take over running that business from you. Otherwise, okay. you will die. So let's give Mr. Let's give Mr. Eke the, the opportunity to respond. Okay. The TEDx interview, the guy that won $1 million on TED this year created a simple application, right? Self-oriented learning environment. So. Our children, people are earning university degrees by studying masters online. So you're seeing. Why do people need to be confined into a room so to seeing. be able to learn? Let's, we are lucky that Mr. Staneke is here. Please, just respond. Frankly, <laughs> frankly, all the discussions, I think they've brought in one bit or the other, okay, to create a composite nature. Uh, they are fundamental issues. Like the professor said, I think the first sincere educational conference in this country was held in 1969 when the country was at war on how to look at the future of education in the new Nigeria. Okay, that was 1969. Now we are transitioning. Some of us are the agents, actually, that I can claim to be the pioneer. If I were the government, my system of intervention would have been to shut down all educational institutions, recertify the teachers, within six months, and those who are qualified to be teachers will be employed as teachers and paid 
appropriate salary. Now, coming to what she said, my group, my content, haven't come from not a rich family, is to drive education cost effectively. In a population of 160 million people, you cannot accommodate this, you cannot accommodate qualified kids within the four walls of an education institution. So you can do online education, okay? People can walk into village halls, online to take education. Those kids are likely going to pass better. They are going to achieve better results than those kids in hosts they're driven in escort cars and all the rest of it. Okay. So my, and I'm proving this because I've done my own investment. The first thing I did, she's talking about Yaya today, but we built in about eight tertiary institutions. We donated, we built, we equipped, and we donated. And we're employing kids from those institutions and their work lives. Now, so we train the teachers, we help to train the students, we give incentive, we allow them to work with us during their holidays. So education is not just technology, it has to be a total person, okay? Including what you call finishing school. Okay. Okay, now, so I think the government should sincerely intervene and it's not a lot of money. Okay. And in all the new schools they are registering, it's like, to me, a scam. People come, they fill form, Leo. they make promises, then they advertise, people will rush, they collect money, and no content. Leo, I'm going to have to interrupt you here. Let me bring okay. in uh, Bambo to share. Uh, of course, we've been talking about uh, st still on the challenges. Let's hear uh, your experience from Ocean State. The Okoimo was you know, widely celebrated. And of course, uh, many people were happy that the Ocean State, you know, like some other states, also trying to part of the drive for ICT in the education sector. Let's just hear your thoughts. The poorest people in the world have unequal education because of lack of access. You can give a child, any child, any electronic gadget, an iPad, a laptop, a Kobo, an e-reader. What really matters is how that gadget translate into a proper learning tool. And this is where Toyoshi comes in. When we designed Opoimo, we took into consideration the challenges of our environment and the peculiarities of our students. Um, we created a platform where you have 63 textbooks offered in 17 subjects, 40,000 past questions of JAM and WAIG, on a single piece of electronic device. And that is the first time, arguably, this is done anywhere in the world. Now, for you to contextualize educational content on a single piece of device, it speaks volume. What have we done? We have simply democratized education. We have simply given the children in our state access to what they never had. That is what we've done. OK, well, Tony, you wanted to comment? Yes. Um, what she has said is, you know, uh, drivable from where I have always laid emphasis on policy. In Oshu State, there is a deliberate effort to make Okoimo available to students. That's the policy of government. Because, you know, the problem with the people from the private sectors or when you operate from a macro, a micro, uh, 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 you know, uh, position, is that you just look at isolated issues. In the Kitty State, we have the eSchool project, which we also distribute laptops to students, including curriculum designs, and many of the other issues, and there's a whole lot of learning process there. He mentioned something about access. Now, let us even take ICT out of it. Because I use myself as a particular example. I, you know, I, 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 you know I, I, I studied in the village secondary school and the village primary school. When I moved to the University of Lagos, there was a clear difference about educational opportunity disparity. Because when I went to the University of Lagos to study mathematics, because of the lack of opportunity to have qualified math teachers, physics teachers, when in the village, it was difficult to match up with students that attended international schools, University of Lagos, or federal government colleges, or, 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 or whatever we have. By the time we were in 300 level, I was a tutor. Many, not, many, many of these students who were who attended those schools, you know, they, I was already, my GP was already ahead of, 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 of their distance. Then, before you not talk about getting to doctorals and those things level. Now, we're talking about many of these things now. Why I'm talking about policy, I would like to use all those states, which is my state as an example, where, this, where the government of that particular state have introduced the concept of mega schools. If you look at past government policies, these cities 
are the places where you have state boarding schools. If you look at where federal government colleges are located, you can see that they are always in urban area or suburban urban area. So for you to really create that opportunity, there must be deliberate policy prescription, policy design to ensure that every child in a particular state or a country have opportunity to that particular kind of technology. When we come back to ICTs now, it means a person in a typical village will be able to have access to it. Because we can think about a lot of things that we want people to be on Facebook, they are, they are using it to do a lot of things there. But let us look at it quantitatively. If the United Nations are to look at the development index of Nigeria and say, what is our level of internet access? Our internet level of internet access in Nigeria. Do you think we will score 90% or 70%? They score us though we are at the bottom of something, meaning that a lot of people in Nigeria don't have access to the internet. So the number of people we are now debating about that are even going there to pornographic sites or doing rubbish on the internet is even in the first statistically significant. So the first thing you have to talk about is to make sure that there's that access. Once you give that access that they are there, and I talk about the concept of pedagogies, the engagement process changes. What stops me from going to Facebook and if I know majority of my students are on Facebook, I will tell you the first person to factorize this thing will get biscuits and did this and an iPad tomorrow. Final words starting from you, Toyosi. 30, 30 seconds, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. I just wanted to quickly talk about the teachers. And somebody's got to convince me why I'm going to be a teacher in Nigeria because we use the very worst and the bottom of the barrel as teachers until we begin to say that you need minimum of five to seven credits until the best and the brightest of our country are rewarded adequately to become teachers. We motivate people went to Harvard to come back to teach. Nigeria's education will remain on the brink. You can, a teacher in Nigeria today and a banker, a teacher and a governor, the teacher who taught the governor while I was in poverty, there is no reason why I would go to acquire a master's and a PhD and dream to teach in Nigeria. There's got to be adequate motivation for teachers because at the end of the day, they are the ones who educate the entire society. So there's got to be adequate reward you know, right. for the teachers. Oshana, a final word from you. We have to ask ourselves, us in the working class, why can't we come back and become the teachers as part-time? Transfer knowledge. I worry that the teachers are behind. We need people who have gone out, worked, improved, evolved, come back to translate that knowledge back. So the, I, my final words, those who can't teach. You can't come and teach because you have not been trained to be a teacher. That is why we have problems. We are talking, please, don't the knowledge. You, you may have the knowledge. No, 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 please. That is a little bit derogatory. It, we are talking that's the only of, way no, I can no, no, stimulate no, no. the teachers. No, 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 please. We are talking of training the teachers in the methodology. If you have the knowledge, can you impart the knowledge? It is not enough for you to say that you have the knowledge. It's imparting the knowledge that is important. And if you are not able to impart the knowledge, you are not able to make any... You, no, please, 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 please. We are talking of having the right teachers who have been prepared adequately to impart knowledge. And when we talk of right teachers, we are talking of teachers who have been exposed to all the knowledge that is required to make him or her the 21st century teacher. ICT savvy. ICT driven and ICT and digitally correct. Thank you. For you to have a revolution, sometimes it won't come from within the system itself. You've got to recognize that. And that is why sometimes when somebody is in a particular discipline, he becomes fixated with that particular, uh, a, a particular approach. You are talking about the teachers getting all the necessary things, which I agree with. But how do you now move to the next level? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. No, sometimes. By sometimes. adequate training. Professor, professor, we, we cannot, we have to, we really have to. No lawyer, no, no those teacher are those can last go words. and be a lawyer. Your last words. We need to move on. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Bamba, let's hear you. I think it is important that we understand the necessity, the need for access in education here. Um, I think it is also important that we need to understand that children and students in Nigeria needs to be put at the center stage until a child in Taraba State is able to compete with a child in Texas, we need to understand that the lines of digital divide has to be etched indelibly. And that is why the state government of Oshun has actually embarked on the distribution of a to all the students in the state. Are we going to, are we on the brink 
of digital revolution here yes, in the education we are sector. there. The truth is that we are there. It's not zero at the moment. Like I said, we are about two, three percent. Okay, and only the government, federal, state, <laughs> local government, can intervene to solve, to find a solution to this problem. And this is how you do it. They talked about teachers. Not everyone is trained as a teacher. It's a passionate profession. You have to love what you do. But in most of the state schools, you have politicians occupying teaching schools, which is unfortunate. They don't go to classes. They don't teach the students. They don't know what to teach. Now, this is the major problem of unemployment in this country. Why should I employ someone that I have to take to training school to teach him or her how to use computers? Because the first day you resume in my office, I give you a chair, I give you a laptop, and you need to write at the end of the day's report and broadcast it online. Now, until the government intervenes, employers like us, I just told you I hired two people, we are hiring more abroad, okay, because they are qualified. Meanwhile, we have brothers and sisters. Now, my pain, and when she mentioned Yaya, I signed in Yaya because she's a graduate musician. Now, two, in the last eight years, I think it's to the knowledge of everyone I just mentioned to the Oshu person, we developed the biggest e-library content. The federal government had just finished deploying 72. We did 36 e-library nationwide. So we are a knowledge-focused composite technology company. I don't want to write off the nation because we have brilliant people, but my greatest pain is that how would a child of a poor man in 21st century acquire knowledge enough for him to survive in this century? And this is where the wealth of this nation will come from, from okay, poor farmers. Thank good. you I'm very gonna, much. I'm going to have to help stop you there. Well, just hold your thoughts up. We're taking a break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us.